Hey, it's Peter here again with my FSHD. You know, I get a lot of questions about what are the differences between FSHD1 and FSHD2. And, you know, people will say they have a, a clinical diagnosis of FSHD, but they want to know what type they are. Are they one or two? Um, and uh, then the questions about, you know, does this matter? You know, is uh, from a, a clinical standpoint or from a therapeutic standpoint, does it matter whether you're FSHD1 or FSHD2 um, or three or four, as some people have heard about, which really are just forms of FSHD2. I've also been told that, you know, I talk a little bit too fast on some of these videos. Now, part of that is because I'm aware that a lot of you have the attention span of a four-year-old um, and, it's, you know, got to be a TikTok video. Um, but, you know, I've also been told that there are a lot of you out there that, you know, are willing to sit through the whole video uh, if I can be clear and um, explain everything because it's important. And um, so that's what I'm going to try to do. I get a little excited, but I'm going to... Uh, slow down and uh, take you through the differences and similarities between FSHD1 and FSHD2 and uh, we'll see how it goes. So here we go. Okay, so we all know that FSHD is genetically linked to chromosome 4, right? Chromosome 4 and specifically the location 4Q35. Okay, so you'll remember that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, one chromosome each from mom and one from dad, and they're ordered, you know, based on size, and so the fourth largest pair is chromosome four. And then um, there's a structure on each chromosome that uh, kind of separates it uh, into a short arm, the P arm, for the French word for short, or small, which is petite, and the Q arm, which is, uh, well, Q just is the letter after P. And the FSHD region is all the way out at the very end of the 4Q arm, about the 35th banding, and uh, at 4Q35. And that's where the D4Z4 repeat array is. And everybody has a D4Z4 repeat array on both chromosome 4s. Um, and in FSHD, one of them is uh, smaller, right? So FSHD1 is caused by deletions in the um, this D4Z4 repeat on chromosome 4. Okay, you have between 1 and 10 D4Z4 repeat units. You, um, you are well, potentially FSHD1. The other part, of course, is you need the 4QA FSHD permissive subtelomere. So when you have 1 to 10 repeats on a chromosome 4QA, that is genetically FSHD1. Okay. So you can also have this deletion um, on chromosome 4 without 4QA. It can be 4QB. This is an FSHD non-permissive allele, and this is not FSHD. And this is actually why the first thing that's done in FSHD testing or something that it should be done in, in FSHD testing um, is to determine whether or not you have a 4QA or 4QB. Um, if you're a 4QB, it just can't be FSHD. Um, so, you know, no 4QA. Uh, that is not an FSHD1 chromosome. And then also, you know, you can have 4QA. 4QA is permissive. It is not pathogenic. So you need it for FSHD, but in its of itself does not cause FSHD. So more than 10 repeats, um, this is also not FSHD, you know, regardless of whether it's a permissive chromosome or not. Okay, so, you know, it's between 1 to and 10 D4Z4 repeats. So you can be 2 repeat units, 5 repeat units, 9 repeat units. You know, whatever. Um, it'll be consistent in your family. If you have FSHD1 in your family, everyone in the family will have the same number of repeat units here, five repeat unit family in general. And in general, the larger the deletion, which means the fewer number of repeats, the more severe, and the smaller the deletion, meaning the more repeats, the, the less severe, more mild FSHD tends to be. Not always, but tends to be that way. Okay, so why do you need both parts? You know, you need the delet deletion and 4QA. Well, inside every D4Z4 repeat is part of the DUX4 gene. And the DUX4 gene, as many of you know, or should know by now, <laughs> the DUX4 gene expression um, in skeletal muscle is what causes um, FSHD, okay? Now, you know, there's only part of it, though, in each of these uh, D4Z4 repeats. Um, uh, the second part of the gene that's absolutely required, the polyadenylation signal, is located in the 4A subtelomere. This is a special signal that um, allows for the gene to be expressed. It, it tells the transcription machinery, the gene expression machinery, to put a whole bunch of A's on the end of the RNA. This makes it stable 
um, it's required for protein expression, and then DUX4 protein expression leads to FSHD pathophysiology. So you need this PAS sequence. And so if you're 4B, regardless of whether or not you have a repeat or not, you do not have this um, polyadenylation signal. So if DUX4 mRNA is made, it is not stable, it becomes degraded, you never get DUX4 protein, and you do not get FSHD pathophysiology. So that's why um, you absolutely need the 4A as opposed to the 4B subtelomer. All right, so what about FSHD2? Well, FSHD2 is also genetically linked to chromosome 4. Okay, so it's still chromosome 4 because that's where the DUX4 gene is located. But it's also linked to chromosome 18. Okay, so FSHD is digenic. Okay, you still need the chromosome 4, D4, Z4 array with a 4A subtelomere, but also you need a second mutation in another gene, most commonly in chromosome 18, um, in order to get FSHD2. Um, so what's the relationship though? Well, the gene product of the chromosome 18 gene, the SMCHD1 gene, functions to regulate expression of DUX4 and chromosome 4. So they are um, functionally linked as well. So on FSHD2, um, the uh, SMCHD1 gene is located on chromosome 18P, so the short arm of chromosome um, 18, um, near the end. And you need one mutation, um, so either the leo from mom or leo from dad. Um, and you need a special D4Z4 repeat unit um, with a 4A on, on chromosome 4. Okay, so example of a FSHD2 capable or permissive um, chromosome. Well, so, you know, we used to call this um, a contraction independent FSHD, but that, that's not quite true. You don't have that FSHD1 contraction, but you do have to have this kind of mid-range D4Z4 repeat array of between 9 and 20, maybe 22 D4Z4 repeat units, and you absolutely have to have um, the 4A sub 2B telomere, again, because you still need to make DUX4. DUX4 is what's going to cause FSHD2, and, F and so DUX4 requires a D4Z4 repeat, as well as the uh, 4A. Okay, and as we mentioned, the FSHD2 is digenic, so it requires two um, different genes. Okay, so you need this repeat unit and a mutation in the SMCHD1 gene, okay, or a different regulatory gene. Um, uh, for FSHD2, okay? So FSHD2 most commonly is chromosome 18, the SMCHD1 gene. And what is SMCHD1? Well, that is a protein, is a repressor of the D4Z4 region, okay? Essentially, this is part of the off switch that keeps DUX4 off. And if you break the off switch, well, then DUX4 can be on and be expressed, okay? So FSHD2 is a little bit different than FSHD1. Okay, there are, of course, non-permissive FSHD chromosomes. For example, here, um, this chromosome does not have an A. So, you know, if you are 4QB, 4QB, you can't have FSHD1 or FSHD2 or FSHD3, 4, 5, whatever. You can't have FSHD. You, you need the 4QA in order to make the pathogenic dex gene. Okay. You also can have too many repeat units to be FSHD2. So you might have the SMCHD1 mutation, but if you have, you know, 25, 30, I mean, you can have up to 100 repeat units, maybe even 120. Um, you can't, some of those are just too big for FSHD2. We're not exactly sure why. Um, probably they still get a, some degree of off, um, but, uh, but what we, we know is those people with a clinical FSHD2 do have that, tend to have that mid-range um, read size. Okay, so FSHD1 is going to be um, deletions of the D4Z4 repeat. It's autosomal dominant. You just need one um, mutation to get between 1 and 10 D4Z4 repeat units with a 4QA. Whereas FSHD2, you need a mid-range repeat um, array. You still need a 4QA, and you need, it's digenic, so you need mutation of the SMCHD1 gene, okay? So I know some of you, I get questions sometimes, you say, well, if I'm not FSHD1 or FSHD2, maybe I'm FSHD3 or 4. And I know some researchers talk about this. And, you know, basically, um, FSHD3, 4, 5, they're just FSHD2. 
Okay, they're just FSHD2 with mutations in genes other than SMCH21. The DNMT3B gene or the LRIF1 gene, both of these are very rare. Um, they still require a 4QA. So again, if you're 4BB, you're, you're just not FSHD. Okay, so you still need to have 4QA and you still need um, a certain size D4Z4. There is one little caveat, the LRIF mutations are recessive, meaning you need two LRIF mutations. You only need one SMCH1 mutation, one DNMT3B mutation. So this, and yeah, maybe this one could be called FSHD3, I don't know. They function like FSHD2. Both of these are regulatory proteins of the region. Okay, still digenic, always digenic. Okay, mutation in a regulatory gene. Okay, so this is basically uh, a uh, all the digenic forms of FSHD, in, in, my, in my opinion, are FSHD2. Okay, so what we showed, all forms of FSHD are genetically linked to chromosome 4A. Okay, you need, you're going to be making DUX4. DUX4 is on the chromosome 4A. DUX4 causes FSHD um, in, in all cases, so it's always going to be linked to that. Okay, but they're also epigenetically linked. Okay, all forms of FSHD have epigenetic changes at chromosome 4a right and you've seen some of the videos hopefully of these if not check them out um, on what is epigenetics we can't cover everything in this but I'll, I'll give you a little bit of the flavor so you know epigenetics are the state of the dna sequence okay genetics is going to be the actual dna sequence ctag you know in, the, in that order the sequence of a gene and the epigenetics are going to be how these are kind of packaged, how this how a gene can be packaged. So a gene can be packaged in different states. It can be packaged in an on state, um, and typically this does not have DNA methylation. It can be packaged in an off state, where this is typically off, so often very heavily methylated. Okay, so in FSHD1, um, the contracted chromosome 4 is not methylated, and therefore it is um, in a gene expression state of of an on, okay, the light switch is on. Um, the non-contracted allele is heavily methylated, and you think of this the switch being off. So you're expressing DUX4 from the contracted allele because of the epigenetics. Okay, what does this mean kind of more functionally? Well, you know, when a sequence is heavily methylated and uh, um, repeat sequences are often heavily methylated, they become very compacted and contracted. Think of this as a slinky, and I got a video where we show this, where a slinky can be very, you know, pressed together, a spring, and, you know, it's not very accessible, or in the unmethylated state, you know, even though it's a smaller DNA sequence, it can be expanded and able to be expressed, okay? Um, FSHD2 is a little bit different because FSHD2, what's broken is the switch to turn things off, not the, not the signal. And so in FSHD2, both of your chromosome 4s are going to be in the unmethylated state, and they're going to be in the transcriptionally on or the gene expression state. So DUX4 could be expressed from either or both chromosomes, okay? So um, that's that's a little bit different. So, um, but, you know, essentially, FSHD1 and 2 both have uh, epigenetic dysregulation leading to DUX4 from the array. So, you know, we're going to dive in a little bit more to you know, what exactly is the difference? Okay, I've kind of, yeah, I kind of given some of it away, but you know, I know it's always good to repeat things in FSHD, so we'll get to it. So all FSHD is caused by misexpression of DUX4. You know, you just get there by different mechanisms. Okay, the end result's the same, and actually, importantly, at the end, we'll get to this therapeutically. It's the same FSHD1 or FSHD2. Basically, the same therapeutic approaches are gonna gonna be. Um, applicable to both, um, you just, you're just kind of getting to the um, to the pathogenic gene expression through different systems. Okay, so we're going to start out with a healthy situation. So a healthy, or, or we'll say non-FSHD, um, chromosome 4 genetics, okay? Those genetics are going to be that you have more than 10 repeats on both of your chromosome 4, you know, chromosome from mom, and chromosome from dad. Um, the two different chromosomes are just called alleles, if you haven't noticed that yet. Um, and so, you know, this is healthy FSHD genetics, okay? So let's talk about epigenetics, so it's gonna be different. Um, epigenetics, you have two healthy genetic, genetically healthy chromosome fours. Um, and what's gonna happen is your genome is gonna kind of notice that, wow, these are repetitive sequences, okay? This is DNA is repeated now a lot um, in a row, direct repeats. 
I'm on both chromosomes and it's going to say, whoops, that's no good. Let's turn this off. And actually your genome has a system, you know, because invasive sequences, viral sequences tend to be repetitive. And so your genome recognizes DNA repeats as saying, hey, these things are not good for the genome. We're going to turn them off. So this is a signal to be turned off. Basically what's going to happen is then um, your, your mechanism for um, the cell is going to come in and start loading it up with some factors that are going to say, turn this off, turn this off, okay? And then put on an off switch, an um, initial off switch on the, on the um, DNA sequence. It says off, 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 keep this off. And then this is going to come in and say, now we're going to keep it off. You know, first you turn it off and then you want to keep it off um, forever. And so that's what DNA methylation is. And so you're gonna maintain repression or off with DNA methylation. And so both of your healthy chromosome fours are gonna be heavily methylated and off. And this is gonna establish an epigenetic environment that is not conducive to gene expression. And the DUX4 gene, remember the DUX4 gene is located right here in this last D4Z4 repeat unit with 4A. The DUX4 gene is located right here. It's methylated, it's off, it's in a bad environment, and it's gonna become compacted, okay? crunched right down down the slinky is going to be pushed together and this is just going to be off okay so you're not going to get any pathogenic dux4 gene expression from either chromosome 4. okay that's in the non-fshd state so what happens in fshd1 well remember fshd1 genetics are you now have lost some of these repeats okay you still have the 4a or, or not yeah you, know, you always have the 4a in fshd but you know you've lost some of the repeats okay so this is the situation so now what's going on is the cell's gonna say, whoa, turn this one off, you know, but it's not gonna notice this one down here. Down here, it doesn't notice your contracted one. It's not a, enough of a repeat to signal the cell to shut it off. Okay, so it's just it's just too small. It's roughly around the nine, 10 units is where it, it, that signal is. Okay, so nothing to see here. Okay, this, this is perfectly fine DNA sequence, so that's cool. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna come on, say, turn it off. You can set up the off switch. Okay, now you're gonna come in, try to keep it off, methylate it, and set up an epigenetic environment. But now you see the difference, okay? Only the non-contracted chromosome four got methylated and shut off because the cell never saw a signal to shut off the contracted um, chromosome four. This did not get methylated, and so this is still on. So you have the switches off here and the switches on down here. Okay, so then what happens? Um, you get compaction of one of the chromosomes, and it's really off, and this other one still on. So you end up getting Dux, remember, Dux4 expression is down here. The Dux4 right here, this gene, that's off. It can't be expressed. But the Dux4 gene right here is, um, is able to be expressed in your skeletal muscles, and that's how you get FSHD. Okay? So that's FSHD1 epigenetics. In healthy cases, they're both chromosome 4s are heavily methylated and off, and FSHD, one of them is off, and the other one with the contraction is epigenetically on, and the Dux4 gene is expressed, okay? So basically this is what's going on, and so the system is essentially not, not functioning right um, at this locus. So what about FSHD2? Now remember, FSHD2, healthy versus FSHD2 genetic, genetically they actually look very similar. The main difference is right here, is the mutation in the SMCHD1 gene. And you don't actually notice this at the FSHD locus. And this is why FSHD1 testing, or a lot of FSHD testing, does not test for FSHD2. If you're measuring um, the DNA for a contraction, like the majority of FSHD testing does for FSHD1, you know, you miss FSHD2 because at the FSHD um, you know, 4Q35 array, it looks the same for FSHD2 and FSHD and non-FSHD. Okay, so um, and so the key, of course, in FSHD2 is the SMCHD1 gene, and this is an epigenetic repressor of the D4Z4. Okay, and that's something, remember, we just talked about how uh, healthy uh, chromosome 4s are, are epigenetically off. Well, that's what SMCHD1 does. It actually is helps set up this um, repression um, arrangement um, at the D4Z4 locus, okay? And so, 
um, in FSHD2, you have a mutation in the SMCHD1 gene, and there can be different types of mutations that lead to like a, only part of the protein being made, or maybe a non-functional protein being made, or maybe the whole gene is deleted. And these kind of give you some little different nuances to the t type of uh, um, uh, epigenetic dysregulation, but the end result is DUX4 is going to be expressed and you get FSHD, as long, of course, as you have the 4A FSHD permissive subtelomer. Okay, so uh, you know genetically FSHD2 looks similar to um, non-FSHD, but epigenetically, you know it's a big difference. Okay, so what's going on? Um, epigenetically, your genome's going to say, "Hey, lots of repeats, more than 10." So turn this off. Okay, genome that the this, this signal is there it says, "Turn me off." Okay, let's keep this gene off. Um, but what's going to happen is. The cell can't do it. The machinery that you have to set up um, and the repressive epigenetics is not, um, is not functional. So the, re the repeat is recognized to be turned off, but the, the off switch is broken, okay, due to the mutation of some CH21 gene. So because of that, um, you do not get methylation. And this, again, now we pick this up in our, in our epigenetic um, diagnostic assay. You do not get methylation at either chromosome, so both the chromosome you inherited from mom, the chromosome you inherited from dad, neither one gets methylated. They both um, have uh, are epigenetically on. You could express Dux4 from both chromosomes, um, you know, and uh, Dux4 expression leads to FSHD. Okay, so what's going on epigenetically? Um, now you got comparison and in healthy chromosomes, they're both off. In FSHD, both chromosome fours are epigenetically on. And if you have the right other conditions to make Dux4, you express Dux4 at FSHD. Okay, so now if we look epigenetically at FSHD1 versus FSHD2, um, they both have epigenetic dysregulation. You just get there by different mechanisms, okay? That's what's really important. Okay, in FSHD1, the signal to shut off the uh, gene expression is broken. In FSHD2, the mechanism to shut off the gene expression is what's broken. Okay, and so you end up with a situation like this. And so if we're doing diagnostics and looking at DNA methylation, and we look at both chromosomes here, you can see that FSHD1, you're gonna see one that's methylated and one that's unmethylated, and FSHD2, they're both unmethylated. Okay, so that's how the epigenetic diagnostic assay distinguishes the two. Okay, now, you know, I told you this doesn't matter for therapeutics, but it does matter for inheritance, okay? So let's go through the inheritance briefly. So FSHD1 inheritance. FSHD1 is considered autosomal dominant. Okay, it's an autosome. So you have 20, 23 pairs of chromosomes, 22 are autosomes, and then your X, either XX or XY in general. And um, those are your sex chromosomes. So those are, you know, those are, well, they're not autosomes, they're XX chromosomes. So dominant, meaning you only need to get one mutation in order to get the disease. So in, in a healthy chromosome four, you have um, a more than 10 D4Z4 repeat units. In FSHD1, you have less, you have between one and 10 D4Z4 repeat units, okay? So for example, five repeat units here, okay? And so now, um, if you have kids and you have FSHD1, you have a 50% chance of passing it on to each kid. So statistically, if you had four kids, two kids would have FSHD, two kids but now these are the different possible combinations with your non-FSHD um, partner, okay? And so now we're often, actually we see this often skewed a little bit, but you know, it's like flipping a coin. Um, each time, you know, so you could have four kids that are healthy, you could have four kids that have FSHD. Statistically, it should be 50%, okay? These are with FSHD, and you can see, you know, just statistically, you can have either chromosome from mom and either one from dad. Okay, so FSHD2 now inheritance is a little bit different. Now, as we mentioned, FSHD2 is digenic, so you're going to need um, two different uh, genetic mutations uh, in order to get FSHD2, to inherit FSHD2. Okay, so a healthy individual, you know, could have um, a D4Z4 repeat unit. It actually doesn't matter what size D4Z4 repeat unit, but, you know, you could have one that's 15 units, you could have one that's 30 units, you know. Um, but you have normal SMCHD1 copies of the gene. However, a healthy carrier 
would have a mutation in the SMCHD1 gene, but they don't have FSHT2 because their, their second component, the D4Z4 repeat array, is too long. In this case, 32 and 30. You need to be less than 20 um, repeating in order to have FSHT2. So now to have FSHT2, though, you need both components, the digenic component, meaning the mutation in SMCHD1, and a you know less than 20 D4Z4 repeat unit on a 4QA. Remember, you always got to have 4QA um, uh, allele in order to make the DUX4 gene to get FSHD. Okay, so now how does it affect inheritance? Okay, so FSHD is digenic. This you know sometimes it can seem like it skips generations. Okay, so. You know, this individual, if they have FSHD2, they have an SMCHD1 mutation and a D4Z4 that is, you know, within the right range to get FSHD2, right? And they can pass that on to a child, but instead of 50%, it's only going to be 25%, okay? Because there's a 50% chance that they get the SMCHD1 mutation and a 50% chance that they get the... Um, correct size D4Z4 repeat unit. So that's, you know, that's 25% that they inherit from both parent, from both from the same parent. Now, you know, the other parent actually matters. It's always nice to know that, but <laughs> they matter because the D4Z4 repeat array can change the math on this, okay? Um, you also, though, can have a child that is apparently healthy, and they could be a carrier, though, of the SMCHD1 mutation, okay? Um, and so, meaning that they have the SMCHD1 mutation for FSHD2, um, but because they did not inherit the correct size D4Z4 from, from you know, either parent, they are an asymptomatic carrier of the disease, okay? Um, and so, you also could have, um, you know, healthy children that don't have the SMCHD1 mutation, and if that's the case, it does not matter what size array they actually have, okay? So, um, now the the, the the difficult part is that the, this carrier, if their partner um, that they have children with has a D, proper D4Z4 size repeat array, um, like in this case a 17 repeat unit with a 4A chromosome, that could actually lead to FSHD2, okay? And so that's a case of that there are these carriers of FSHD2 and FSHD2 families that can seem like um, FSHD is skipping a generation. In this case, it seems like it skipped this generation. You know, genetically, the FSHD2 mutation did not, it's just because it's digenic. All right, so overall, FSHD1 versus FSHD2, um, you know, they both result from epigenetic dysregulation and expression of DUX4 from the 4Q35D4Z4. Remember, FSHD1 is caused by contraction of the D4Z4, loss of signal to turn off the gene, where FSHD2 is caused by mutations in the D4Z4 repression mechanism and it results in loss of the off switch. Okay, so same end result, you just get there a different way. So there you have it, FSHD1, FSHD2, or FSHD3, 4, whatever. They're all just FSHD, okay? Um, you know, that they all are caused by epigenetic dysregulation of the DUX4 gene and skeletal muscle. You just get there a different way with FSHD1. The signal that says, you know, shut me off is broken with FSHD2 and the other regulatory FSHD2 is the switch to do the repression or shutting off the light switch is kind of is broken. Okay, therapeutically, it's really just not going to matter. Um, anything targeting the DUX4 mRNA or protein or downstream of DUX4 is going to work for all the FSHDs um, 1 and 2. Uh, you know, the anti-sense technology that's coming will, will work for both of them. Um, but, you know, even the regulatory drugs like the Fulcrum Lasmophamod, the CRISPR inhibition that we're working on, all of these work on uh, FSHD1 and 2 and, and other as well. So, um, you know, it's good to know what you are. It probably has something to do with uh, variability in families. There's FSHD1 plus 2, which, you know, gets even more complicated. But we're going to talk about that in the next video. Um, but, but there you have it. I hope uh, it's clear and I was able to calm down a little bit and talk slower. And thanks for sticking with it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. See ya.